Steph, Mark Schwartz, ESPN. You guys have seen a lot of ups and you've seen some downs over this five-year run. How do you describe this particular challenge and compare it to anything else that you guys have ever faced? Um, I don't know. I think this is it's just thinking about you know what's happening now. It's hard to kind of compare just because all, everything, all my mental energy and and whatnot is focused on the task you know at hand right now. Uh, being down three one in the finals where we haven't been in this position before, but. I guess in the finals, but playing, playing OKC and uh, the whole 16 year or 2016 run where we were on both sides of this equation, you can kind of relive those experiences, and understand what the emotions were like, and you know how important every literally every possession of those you know potential closeout games were on both ends, and and what it took for those comebacks to happen. But for us. It's just a matter of can you win one basketball game right now? Can you go out tomorrow, play an amazing 48 minutes, um, you know, quiet this crowd that's going to be probably unbelievable tomorrow, uh, slow down a team that's been playing amazing these last, especially these last two games, and just win one basketball game and take it from there. And if, if we focus on that mission, um, you know, our history kind of speaks for itself in, in, in terms of being able to get that done. Just win one basketball game and, and, and then we'll, we'll worry about the rest. Davide, next row back. Uh, Steph, Davide Chinellato, Gazzetta Italy. Uh, Coach Kerr just said there's a chance KD might be playing tomorrow after all. Um, my question is, um, how did you see him during this process, him being out? And um, how your way of playing is going to change if he's back, considering he's probably not, not going to be at 100%? I don't think my style will change much at all. It's just it's, you know, having another powerful weapon out there that uh, can do some very dynamic things on the floor and we'll be able to adjust and transition pretty, pretty smoothly. He's been in you know plenty of finals and has played well and no matter what percentage he's at uh, I'm sure he'll be impactful and effective out there um, but again from for any myself or anybody you know in our rotation who's been playing a lot of minutes it, we just had to be aggressive and smart and uh, you know competitive especially on the defensive end and the rest should take care of itself. And here in the front. Steph Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, I'm just wondering, as the leader of the team, can you assess the, the, the vibe around the team, the mindset going into this situation? I think after game four, it was, it was a tough, tough vibe in the, in the locker room just because you, you lose two in a row at home. Nobody likes that feeling at all, especially in the finals. And it's kind of a little self-reflection of, you know, what do we need to do and what do we need to correct for us to stay alive. Um, but uh, I wouldn't say we're down at all. It's mostly just we're anxious for tomorrow to get, just get out there and, 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 and play a, a great basketball game. And I think we're confident in that fact that we can do that. And our the best bet for us is just to block out as much noise as possible. Uh, have a great practice today where you know we hone in on the details that we need to correct and really come with the right mindset of the energy and, and effort we need to play with uh, with our backs against the wall. And again, like I kind of said earlier, we know we can do it. Um, it's just a matter of you know proving it. Michael over here. Steph, Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Um, this idea of, of, of how important it is to take it one possession, one game, uh, blocking out the noise, do, does that come naturally? Is that uh, something that you, you can't imagine being any other way, or is it something you've really had to practice and learn and get better at? It definitely comes with experience for sure. Uh, you could say it, but in terms of you don't know how 
just how hard it is to do that um, at this stage and at this level. Uh, but having been here five straight times and been through all type of experiences and different styles of play, different paces, uh, playing against you know amazing talents and that we've had, and even now with the way that Toronto's been playing these last two games, like. It's just a matter of just buckling down and and uh, and figuring it out. So it's easier for us to say that because we have been through so many experiences, and and I think the confidence that we can flip that switch and and no matter what's happened the last two games, be world beaters on you know tomorrow from the from the jump um, is is definitely something that we can do and execute, but. It does help having been on the back end of this five-year journey where we've, we've seen so much and been in a lot of different atmospheres and different pressures and expectations that we can, can lock in on just strictly 48 minutes. The, the context of it all, it really doesn't matter. It's just win one basketball game and take it from there. Dan, on your right. Steph, uh, Dan Wicke with the Los Angeles Times. Along those lines, in, in a 3-1 series, in a game five, how much of it is sort of tricking yourself if you're up to – to play with urgency, and if you're down to to not look at sort of we have to win three, but it's it's one is is this more of a mental test, game fives? I mean, yeah, considering how how tough the last two games were, it's you can't lose your your identity and and certain things that have made us successful over the course of of this run. Um, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel by any stretch of like these huge adjustments or anything. It's just looking at those these last two games, the game three and four, you know, where we lost them were, you know, these four to six mini run four to six minute mini runs that Toronto went on and where they put a lot of pressure on us just by how efficient they've been on the offensive end and felt like they could get any shot that they wanted to. Um and obviously the way that they're defending us was trying to create good offense uh, on those possessions to kind of go back at them. We haven't we haven't done it, so that's really it. Uh, you know, can you can you see the picture and 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 envision what we need to do out there and turn that into reality by executing it? Um, we have high IQ guys that I feel like won't be rattled by the, the you know the, the pressure of that situation because. Uh, you know, a couple of missed shots here and there. You can start to think like, "Oh, uh, this might be not. This might not be our night, or stuff like that." That can't creep in. It has to be, you know, in spite of whatever happens, uh, game five. Just get the job done, no matter how pretty or ugly it is. Arash, over here. Uh, Steph, to your left. Arash Madain with Sportsnet. You mentioned in practice today working on detail or two without divulging state secrets. Could you just elaborate on what you think a couple of the details that need to be cleaned up are? Mostly just defensively in terms of the stuff that they've done to be, uh, to create, you know, good looks on the offensive end, whether it's communication on our switches or rotations out of traps or, you know, a simple detail is just in boxing out uh, when a shot goes up. You know, those are valuable possessions uh, in a in a pivotal game like like game, like a, a game five when you're down three one. So we just have to have everybody in the right in the same mindset on the same page. And the just the mental focus you need to have uh, it starts in practice again envisioning what what that's going to look like. Everybody marinating on it for the, you know, the next 24 hours and then going out and get, getting the job done. Thank you, Steph. This concludes.